previously on MasterChef Generations, you'll have to cook for the LAFC. Anna, you've got the immunity pin. You will decide which generations will be teaming up together. So millennials are going to team up with our baby boomer friends. Oh! <laughs> Players are arriving. Rebecca, how much time left? Lord have mercy. Rebecca. I'm moving the steak. I'll see her. You finish. Blue team. It's not even remotely near. Help him out. The winning team is... Red team! I feel like I just scored a goal. The person going home tonight is Chris. Tonight on MasterChef Generations, it's the baking challenge for the ages. Nice haircut. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look like a nice, innocent boy, huh? Devil baby. Now, your challenge is to bake the most amazing birthday cake. Oh. Oh. That's a big challenge. I don't know if I'll be able to do it. Let's go. How many ounces are in one pound? This tends to be the Achilles Hill for most of the home cooks. Oh, my God, this is going to be hell. My this is not for the faint of heart. This is a mayonnaise cake. Mayonnaise cake? This is in trouble. It's a disaster. That is not going to stand. It's inedible. It's a mess. What were you thinking? into my own birthday party. We're celebrating me. I could literally fit in there. Birthday and cake are synonymous, so we're going to need some cake. And I'm pretty sure we're going to be the ones making it. Oh, my heavens. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, my gosh. Those are Gen X pictures, man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Here they come. Oh. Yeah, no, that wasn't a haircut. That was the last bowl from my mother's <laughs> kitchen that just went on top of my head. And look at her own. Yeah. You was, I mean, honestly. Look like a nice, innocent yeah. boy, huh? Look at that smile. Uh, Joe, did you forget your homework? What, did you upset your mum? <laughs> the devil, baby. <laughs> you nailed it. Now, these photos are a huge clue ahead of tonight's challenge. Ooh. Because we're going to celebrate everyone's favourite day, no matter what generation you come from. It's your birthdays, yes? <laughs> So tonight, as part of our big birthday celebration, your challenge is to bake yourselves the most amazing, beautiful birthday cake. Yes. Because yes. here's the good news. You can make whatever you want okay. from an elevated version of a favourite cake growing up as a child, or maybe the cake that you wished you had on your birthday. No matter what direction you take, we'd like to see a cake with at least two layers that looks and tastes outstanding. Yes, yes sir. sir. OK, Anna. Hello. You were the winning captain of the red team in the last challenge. And you won the challenge before that, Anna. You are on quite the winning streak. I hope it doesn't end. <laughs> I hope it does. <laughs> no. <Sorry. laughs> well, tonight, you do not have the immunity pin. But thanks to that win last time, you have earned yourself an amazing advantage, which we'll get to in a moment. OK, all of you, please head to your stations. I'm not a very good baker, so having an advantage, let's see if I can somehow use it to protect myself from elimination. Now, as you can see, you've got all the essentials to make an amazing birthday cake. Flowers, sugar, stand mixers, you name it, you've got it. Anna, for being the winning team captain, uh, you get a great advantage tonight. You get to choose one generation that will not get to use their stand mixers <gasps> tonight. No way. Oh. Are you kidding? Mm. Oh, that's a big challenge. There's no way. That's right. One generation will have to do all their mixing by hand. Oh. You'll be doing it old school. Right, Anna, if you're ready, please make your way up here. Thank you. So, Anna, which generation will be using a whisk tonight? The last time round, the boomers, the boomers helped so much, and I just cannot do that to them. Wow. You're safe. I decided to pick Gen Z. Oh, Gen Z. Very good bakers. They do rely on technology. Yes. And there's five of them. 
Thank you. Anna, rejoin your millennials. Uh, good, good choice. Job. Head back to your station. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Anna. Everybody is coming after Gen Z. I don't blame them. I would too. With a team that's good, you got to take them down somehow. But I'm freaking out. I can barely bake a cake with a stand mixer and baking it without one with just the whisk and my muscles. I don't know if I'll be able to do it. Okay, now listen up. You've got 90 minutes to bake a delicious, beautiful birthday cake. Now, the immunity pin is up for grabs again tonight. Ooh, yeah. Along with another big advantage in the next challenge. Wow. But I promise you, if your cake falls short of the MasterChef standard, then you could be eliminated tonight. Right, is everybody ready? Yes, 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 yes sir. sir. Your 90 minutes starts now. Good luck. Powdered sugar. Honey strawberries. Let's not drop this. Oh, I don't need that. How many ounces are in one pound? 16. And over mix the phone. Come on, baby. Oh my god, this is gonna be hell. This birthday cake challenge tonight is by far the toughest challenge we've had so far. Baking is chemistry and it's very, very precise, and there's no room for error no. from the first step. Yeah, and this tends to be the Achilles Hill for most of the amateur home cooks. Jeez. And Anna with the big advantage. Um, she took out the Gen Z's. Uh, Gents, what do you think about that? When you have a stand no. mixer, you have the luxury of taking your ingredients and pouring them in it slowly, yeah. and you have complete control. Yep. When you're whisking by hand, you lose all that control. Exactly. Yep. The biggest issue is if Gen Z will also lose a lot of time without the stand mixers. And the great irony is she gave it to the generation that is accustomed to shortcutting everything. Mm -hmm. Literally, is an app for this? Like, I mean, they don't show you how to hand whisk in TikTok. I am making a lemon cake with whipped cream frosting and a raspberry jam. The only sweets I like are lemon sweets. That's why I'm doing a lemon cake, and I've always had that since I was little bitty. But I'm definitely very anxious because I'm doing everything by hand, the old caveman type of way. So I am in my own personal little H-E double hockey stick at the moment. Um, look at Mert. It looks like Mert starting a fire. What's he doing with that whisk? <laughs> What's he doing? Yeah. I've, I've never seen that. I've never seen that technique. I've, never, I've, seen, I've never seen anyone whisk like that. Mert, blow on it, it may catch fire. What was this? It, uh, one of the boomers told me about this, so I'm trying their really? technique. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm what, not so sure, Mert. What the hell is that? It's working, it's working. 15 minutes gone. We're down to 75 minutes to go. Come on, Gen X, whip it. You got this. Yeah, baby. I can't believe Hi. Anna has ice running through her veins. I How know. happy are you not to have gotten that cruel fate of not having a stand mixer? I'm so excited that she uh, gave us a little pity party and let us have a break. All right, so Kimberly, you're a baker, huh? No, I'm not a baker. You're not a no. baker. I've baked one cake in my life. So what are you making? Well, I was thinking back of my childhood when I was 10 years old. My mom threw me a big strawberry shortcake party. And so I'm going to make a vanilla classic cake with a strawberry frosting and a strawberry jam for the filling in the middle. So having my own garden, I do a lot of preserving. And so I'm kind of trying to give it a new garden, fresh twist. So you make a lot of jams and do preserving. Yeah. You know that in a cake, a jam is really pivotal to manage the amount of moisture Correct. to make sure it's syrupy and dense enough that Correct. it doesn't tear the cake apart. So you have to cook these strawberries. Correct. And you also have to let them cool down. I got a lot to do. Good luck. Thanks, right. guys. Appreciate it. It's hot in here. And it's not just because my looks. 65 minutes remaining. Your cake batter should be in the oven. Everyone's cake's in? Almost. All right. Hustle, hustle. All right, let's keep going. Okay, the millennials got their cakes in. That is fast. Perfect. Right. And now the boomers got theirs in too. I don't like how this thing is wixing. Absolutely dying right now. Dying. I think some of the Gen Zs are getting critically behind at this point. They look far from putting their cakes in the oven. You're really seeing the, the penalty of the hand whisk at this point. That's right. Anna, you're ruining my life. My arms hurt so bad. 
<laughs> Guys, you gotta get those cakes in the next couple of minutes as soon as you can. You gotta get it in the oven. Let's go, move. Come on, Amy. It's gotta go in. Come on. down to 55 minutes remaining. Your cake batter should be in the oven. See, look, we're getting there. We're getting there. Come on, honeys. Have fun. Ooh. There you go. There you go, Haley. Let's go. Let's get this. Right, you should be getting that frosting together now. So frosting, yeah. honestly, you've got to start that early in order yeah. to make sure that that frosting is silk, it's glossy, it's beautiful, there's no lumps. Now, when you've got a stand mixer, it's so easy because you've got the velocity of the mixer, but with a frosting by hand, that's going to be very difficult for the Gen Zs. My wrist, my arm. Boomers, you're quiet. Everybody good? We're still booming. OK, Boomy. Had many birthdays. I just had my 70th birthday. I did everything but said no candles. Can you imagine 70 candles on a cake? It'd be like the burning of a banana. No, ain't gonna be none of that. All right, I am good. Becca, yes, uh, yes. what's yes. the cake? What are you doing? So I am doing a chocolate cake with a peanut butter buttercream and a peanut brittle toffee with a chocolate ganache. This is a mix of desserts that I've had and a gotcha. mix of my ideal birthday cake. And then are you pivoting with no stand mix? How are you going to get that frosting perfectly I, smooth? This is half peanut butter, half butter. So because the butter is already creamy, it's already smooth, I didn't yes. have to take as much time to get it creamy. Love that idea. Just because that temperature doesn't rise, otherwise Absolutely. that fat's going to come out. Absolutely. Uh, how many layers are you doing? Uh, three. Let's go, Becca. Woo! Uh, we also just two. Yeah, I've got confidence in my baking skill and that I know what I'm doing. A tough week last week. Tonight, we're hoping not just redemption, but bounce back beyond belief. Absolutely. Love it. Keep it up, girl. Thank Keep you. it up. Thank you, Chef. Good. Hot walking. Hi, Chef. Hello, Rebecca. How are you? Hi, Joe. How are you doing? What is the cake? This is a chocolate mayonnaise cake, and so it's an mayonnaise egg cake. mayonnaise cake. Back in the uh, 40s, you know, they didn't have eggs, or maybe they had one or two. They would extend them and make mayonnaise. And this is my mom's and great-grandma's recipe, and um, it's something that I've made many times before. Only thing I haven't done is made this a three-layer cake, so I'm taking a little risk. Look, I think that you've already conveyed your experience yes. to the rest of the competitors. Like, you're one to watch. Do you think you can win this? I do. Good luck. Thank you. Got a few more minutes. All right, here we go. I'm making a trace leches cake. My forearms are going, veins are popping. I'm just hoping I get this whipped cream whipped in time and not mess up. Oh, boy. Fatima. Ah. Hi. Tell me about the cake. So I'm making a white cake. It's going to have a caramel filling with coconut, because we had a lot of coconut candies growing up. Huh. And um, the frosting is going to be Italian meringue. Italian meringue? Yes, it is. With my hat? <laughs> yeah. And this is the first time I'm going to be trying this. Matt, you're not taking this easy, are you? I'm trying to prove a point here. We're strong. We're Gen Z. And we get things on second Admirable, best. But I'm nervous about the Italian meringue because it's one of the most difficult frostings on the planet because you have to mix that sugar and those egg whites to get it airy. But you don't have a stand mixer to help. So uh, good luck. Thank you. I got this. I got this. Come on. Arthur. Hey, guys. What do you have going on here, sir? So I'm making a fresh strawberry whipped cream birthday cake. It's a cake that I've had not just once, but pretty much every birthday. I loved the freshness of it and okay. the berries. Well, and like a fresh, light. simple cake can be delicious, but what's going to distinguish yours? Adding a lemon and lemon zest to it and using fresh berries. Oh, cool. Are you going to uh, macerate this with something? Yes, Maybe with just sugar. lemon and sugar? Yes. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. And there are some insanely ambitious, complicated cakes out there. Wow. Yes. You're playing a high risk game because the more simple it is, the more perfect it has to be. Correct. Good luck to you. 40 minutes to go. Guys, you got to get those cakes out of the oven now so they can cool completely before you frost. Let's go. We got cake today. Hallelujah. Beautiful. Boom. Oh, I love you. OK. Come on. Our things not coming together. Come on. How you doing, Chef? Uh, how you doing? This is in trouble. I think I'm going to redo the frosting. Well, I can just see the lumps in that. Yes. Um, and yes. you have a stand mix, and I know. you have no excuse. So what happened? I, I don't know why it broke. 
I'm going to redo it right now. Yeah, make sure that cream is nice and ice cold. Uh, tell me about the cake. What are you doing? So I'm doing a confetti cake. When I was a kid, this is the cake I love the most. And this type of cake was actually invented on my birthday year, 1989. So it was wow. very popular in the 90s. But I've elevated this cake a bit because I add lemon and lemon zest and lemon nice. extract throughout. Yeah, I love that. Restart that yes, frosting, yes, please. Yes. Good luck. Thank you. All right. Come on. Come on. Here she is, Anna. You had a big advantage earlier to literally throw an entire generation into a chaotic mess. Yes. Who are you targeting there? Beck and Adam are great bakers, so yes. it was my only choice. Tell me about your cake. What are you doing? So growing up in Ukraine, you know what we had? A dense milk. We would take like those really thin, mm -hmm. flavorless mm -hmm. wafers and layer it with boiled condensed milk. And that was my birthday cake. I'm using Dolce de Leche, which is pretty much boiled condensed milk. And I'm making caramel frosting for brown butter coffee cake. Wow. Are the sponges out of the oven yet? They are temperamental. Uh, where are they? In the oven. Are they still in the oven? Yes. Oh my God. I know. How long have they got to go? I think maybe two minutes. And those sponges need to get cooled down, right? Yes, I know. Yeah, I think you're running out of time a little bit, don't you? I am. I hate baking. Man. Uh, good luck. Thank you. Dear, oh dear. Well, that's a little warm still. This one's good. 30 minutes remaining. We should start to assemble our cakes. Come on, guys. Let's go. Come on. Come on, Kamei. Kamei from the Millennials. She is a little bit behind. The first frosting she broke, the cream was over whipped, and so the whole thing almost looked like scrambled eggs. Uh oh. Uh, so she has to start that again. Guys, Anna is running so far behind right now. Her cake just came out of the oven. Hopefully, it will cool down in time. Man. This just takes a lot of energy. Oh, my God. Here's my biggest worry tonight. Fatima from Gen Z. She's doing a white cake, and she's covering this thing with an Italian meringue. An Italian meringue without a stand mixer? That is a very complicated oh technique that only experienced bakers can do. Yeah, absolutely. And, and if you're not fast enough on the whisk, then the sugar hits the bottom and solidifies, so she could be in trouble with that. Ay, ay, ay. This is hard. This is hard. I think Fatina's a bit of a tailspin. Yeah. She's in a bad space. I think she'd bit off more than she can chew with this Italian meringue. Yeah. Looks like Anna may have delivered a deadly blow to Gen Z tonight. down to our final 20 minutes. We should now all be assembling and decorating our cakes. Speed up. Come on, come on, come on. Stress, looking good. Oh, that's so much better. Oh my God, finally, you got it, buddy. Oh. Came together. Fatima, how are you? Doing okay. okay. Just a lot of energy. Do, girl. That's a hard one to do, you're doing great. Fatima's still on that. It's all around. I can do this. Almost there. Come on, you got it, Fatima. Come on, boomers. Let's go. Boomers in the house. Hi, Christopher. Well, what cake are you making? This is the forbidden cake, which is a black forest cake with whipped cream and maraschino cherries on it. This right. is when you went to the a birthday party when you were a kid and you saw that. Uh, white cake with the strawberries on it, and then that's what they let you have. And then all the adults were having that beautiful cake Unctuous, with all the exactly. chocolatey, rich. Can this I is have that some cake. of that? And then no, no, there's alcohol in it. There's like rum or there's uh, something like that. The, so I'm making that. So for... you're gonna load this up with booze, chocolate. <laughs> exactly. I love that. So the alcohol you have, Kirsch. Yes, I do. What Cherry brandy. Yes. And are you doing a ganache or uh, icing? I'm just doing whipped cream. Just whipped cream. It's gonna look old school, uh, baby boomerish. Look, mm. old school is fine. It needs to be delicious, though. Absolutely. Good luck, Christopher. All right, let's make this happen. Let's make it go. Geeks, yeah. so right, what geek. is this, like a compromise? They didn't take away your stand mixer, but you're using the handheld mixer. That's a little bit old school. Yeah, I like it's, it. It's kind of, I'm more in control. All right, what's the cake, Geeks? It's a vanilla cake with a blueberry frosting. I'm making that because growing up, it was all in a box. So, you know, as I get older, if I decided to make a cake, it, I throw a lot of fruit in it. What is that? This is um, blueberry cream cheese frosting. I'm making it as healthy as I can. Yeah, but this is Master Chef, and someone's going home tonight. Make sure it tastes good. Yeah, I get it. I get it, you know? Good luck Thank to you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Proud of you, Mr. Cake. Go, Gen Z. 
Mert, it looks beautiful. Is it funny? Um, the ones that have dealt the big blow tonight seem to be handling it very well. The Gen Zs look like they've caught up. Yeah. Haley's demeanor has definitely changed. Yeah. You can see that she turned the corner there. But I'm worried about Fatima. Yeah. That cake is wobbling in the middle. And she's messing with it a lot. Fatima thinks she's going to be able to save that cake with a blowtorch, but it's not no, going to happen. No, that actually might be causing more damage. No. It's going to soften up the meringue that's holding it together. Oh, my goodness. Look at Arthur. He cut the fruit too big. That is not going to stack. He's going to struggle to keep those layers upright. And the inside's a mess. Last five minutes. Five minutes to go, guys. Come on, keep it going. Make it pretty, everyone. Oh, it's sliding. All right, guys, look, Anna's having some real problems with the construction of her cake. It's tilting. She's, like, really forcing it to kind of keep it straight. The aesthetic is going to definitely be not to her standard. Work with me. Last two minutes. This is Let's it. Let's go. Come on, guys. Yes. Two minutes, guys. Ooh. Oh, no, you didn't put your name on I it. I did it, yeah. <laughs> 60 seconds to go. Last minute. Come on. It's been a freaking mess. I don't know what else to do. So, Rebecca, look at the size of that cake. The lean. It's almost like the leaning tower of pizza. God. She's making a lot of technical errors. Oh, man. Look at Anna's. It's a disaster, and it keeps oh on falling God. down. You got it, Anna. You got it. On a nice and easy. Let's go, guys. Push. Let's go. This is not for the faint of heart. <gasps> Ten. Nine. Nine eight. eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Hands in the air. Oh my God. <laughs> Woo! Ooh, that was crazy. That was crazy. My arms hurt. Yeah! Good job. <laughs> Anna, you didn't quit. The piping's beautiful. Come on, girl. You're not going anywhere. Don't worry. Don't worry. You're not going anywhere. Right now, my cake is falling. There is nothing I can do. I cannot fix it. I cannot touch it. I cannot freeze it. I can't believe it's happening. I can't believe I might be going home. I'm just disappointed. All of you, well done completing that cake challenge. But only one home cook will win that elusive immunity pin. And they'll take their entire generation to the safety of the balcony with them tonight. But who's ever baked the worst cake from the remaining generations is in danger. Gents, shall yes. we? Hello, Becca. So, you have three layers. Yes. Very bold to go three levels. But the question was it needed. Much. You confident with the filling? Yeah, I soaked it, but it needs to hold a structure, so I didn't want to over-soak it. I feel really nervous. I think the judges are even more critical because all eyes are on Gen Z. Were you happy with the Italian meringue at the end? Um, given that I didn't have a standing mixer, I think I did a pretty good job. If you taste that, Italian meringue is smooth and fluffy. You see how grainy it is. Yeah. Jeet, you happy with the glazing? It's evenness? With my skill and caliber of it, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Thank you. Kamei, are you happy? I am happy that the frosting finally came out. OK. Anna, did you put this together when the sponges were warm? I think the frosting was too soft. It's a shame. It's a shame. Damn. Kimberly, what is this right here? I made the filling kind of like a quick jam. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm a little worried that everyone in my generation made a strawberry cake. What are you doing with the strawberries? I covered them in raw sugar. But I'm hoping that mine stands out. It's a bit rustic. It's a bit simple. And even though I'm not a professional baker, I'm proud of how I made All this right. cake look. Yes. On the inside, you have a layer of cake, yes. then a layer of fruit, an ungodly amount of strawberries. Is that a good idea, you think? Yeah. Geeks. Your name is Geeks, though, right? Couldn't fit a little S here, no? I ran out of room. Are you happy with the consistency of this? I am, yeah. Well, what's inside? Because this tastes a little pasty. Add a little bit of flour, yeah, and then more powdered sugar. Tighten it up. Raw flour and an icing. Yes, just a little bit.
Rebecca, tough night, right? Yeah, got a little wonky. Christopher, are you happy with the way it came out? I feel like it could be better. Yeah. Look, it was tough, man. This is hard. A lot of good cakes out yeah. there. Some pretty good cakes. Both of those cakes look like they could have been in any bakery. Yeah. yeah. All right, so the question is, who made the worst cakes of the night? Oh, man. Yeah. 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 Tonight, we'll be tasting the best cake from each generation. The first cake from Gen Z is positively eye-catching, especially without a stand mix. Please step forward. Becca. Anna's goal was to target us, to take me down, to take Gen Z down. It didn't work. And today we proved that technology just helps us live our lives, but if you take it away, we can whisk with the best of them. Right, Becca, tell us what you made, please. I made a three-layer moist chocolate cake covered in peanut butter buttercream with chocolate ganache and peanut brittle toffee. Right, Becca, this thing looks beautiful. Thank you. Like it's just come out of a top of French patisserie. Why three layers on a night like tonight when we only asked you for two? Because I could. I knew I had the ability to do it. Yeah, in order for that to work, it has to be the right ratio of filling inside. Are you confident? Yes. Mm -hmm. Shall we? Let's do it. Wow. Happy with that, Becca? Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Sponge cake is slight. Contrast to the rich creaminess. It's got that peanut butter chocolate crunch. And I love that you push the salt right to the limit. Good job. Thank you. Yeah, it has that nougat situation happening, which I really enjoy. Smart choices. Thank you. Cake tastes delicious. And the sponge is cooked beautifully. And it's got the right ratio. I think that's the really pleasing aspect. Well done. Thank Good you. Job. Great job. Thank you. Good job, Becca. Atta boy. So the cake that we love the most in the millennials has some very complex flavors that came together in the end. Please come forward, Kame. Given the obstacle that I just went through with my frosting, I am shocked. So what you have in front of you is a lemon confetti cake with vanilla and lemon in the sponge, vanilla buttercream frosting, and rainbow sprinkles. I don't think there's a better example of a millennial cake than this. It's well constructed. Good job. Thank you, Joe. Shall we? Is that what you wanted in the center? Close, chef. Love it. It's very vanilla. I can taste the lemon. The icing is not too rich, and it's actually quite delicious. Thank you, John. I'd love just attention to detail, how it relates to flavor. The icing is just so smartly put. You see that? It's just a little layer. You could have easily gone overboard with the icing on top. Delicious. Thank you, Chef. Kimmy, the lightness of this cake is delicious. The aeration in the sponge is incredible. Thank you. If I was you, I would have gone that extra yard and put a lemon curd in the center. But you're a joy to watch, because you never give up. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right. Okay, okay, the best cake from Gen X. Obviously, it has some strawberries on it. <laughs> Please come forward, Kimberly. Oh. Good job, Kimberly. I made a vanilla cake with a strawberry jam filling and a strawberry buttercream frosting. It looks delicious. It's symmetrical. You put things together with care, and it's eye-catching. Thank you. Shall we? Very nice, very pink. Wow. OK, Ken. Kimberly, the magic here for me personally is there's a tartness that's very present here. And I think this kind of cake needs it. Good job. Sponge is delicious. Kimberly is elegant. Thank you. <laughs> I love the frosting. But this center needs more of that beautiful jam. All right, hurry. I like the restraint of this cake. Thank you. It feels like you could eat it for breakfast. Oh, thank you. Uh, good job. Thank you. Good job, Kimberly. Good job, girl. It reminds me of a Victoria sponge back home. It's done beautifully. Right, Baby Boomers, our favorite cake from your generation. This cake was very well constructed. 
and artfully decorated as well. Please make your way forward. Right, baby boomers, our favorite cake from your generation. Please make your way forward. Christopher. This is my first time in the top, and it's with a cake. I'm not the cake guy, but I'm thinking cake actually looks pretty good. I made a black forest cake. It's got three layers, whipped cream and maraschino cherries on it. I think this cake of all the cakes this evening has the most professional aesthetic. Wow. Good job. Thank you. Shall we? Uh, talk about the construction of the layers. I soaked the sponge in sour cherry syrup and cherry liqueur. Smart. But not bad. Talk about a showstopper. The sponge cake is airy and fluffy, and I can really taste the kirsch. Good job. Thank you. One of the best sponges I tasted tonight, as far as moistness, consistency, and the lightness of the cream, top notch. Thank you. Uh, Christopher, the cake's delicious. I think it's your best performance in this competition so far, so yeah, this cake deserves a smile. <laughs> Get that bean grease. Right, you have given us something to chat about. Tough one, this one. Um, so, uh, Becker's. I think it was really good. Kamei's. Man, what a fun cake. Kimberly's. That was fun. I needed more jam, though. How about Christopher's? That's his best performance. Get that bean grease. <laughs> Save us. Are we happy? Yes. Yeah. Oof. Tonight's best cake, congratulations, goes to... Becca, you win the immunity pin. And to think that you did it all without a stand mixer. Thank you. The rest of you, head back to your generations. Well done. Good job. Becca, come on up here. Congratulations, girl. Yeah. <laughs> well done. You and all of Gen Z are safe from elimination. Get yourself and your team up to the safety of the balcony. Off we go. The fact that last challenge, I was at rock bottom, and I felt like a failure. To come into this challenge and to make something that the judges loved and to win this immunity pin, it feels amazing. I love it. It's my new best friend. Uh, Gen Z's, well done. Fatima, honestly, that Italian meringue is grainy. You would have been in the bottom for sure. <sighs> now, unfortunately, there was one cake from the remaining three generations that did not meet the standard we were looking for tonight. Now, the first cake comes from the millennials, and this individual knows who they are. I feel like I'm melting. I feel like things are surreal. I can't breathe. I made a brown butter, coffee-flavored cake with salted caramel frosting, chocolate whipped cream, and chocolate ganache. I think you really wanted to do something really elaborate but ambition got the better of you here. The cake is lopsided and literally falling apart. Shall we? So what is in between the layers, please? It's salted caramel frosting, and the layers are drizzled with vanilla syrup. It's incredibly dense. So much frosting. Oh, that's a lot of frosting. Anna, the sponge cake is wrong. It's coarse. The filling is off balance, too dense. The frosting is inedibly sweet. Like, every component is flawed. Yeah, I mean, you have a third of an inch of frosting twice. It is just a hit of sweetness that is taking over my palate, sadly, Anna. I'm sorry. Yeah, instantly within that first mouthful, it is incredibly sweet. I love the salted caramel, but it's almost sickly sweet in a way that I cannot take a second bite. Thank you, Anna. OK, the cake from Gen X looks like it has some structural issues as well. Please come forward. Arthur. I'm not ready to go home. Go get him, Arthur. I certainly don't want to go home for a cake that I'm proud of. 
I made a fresh strawberry and whipped cream birthday cake with a lemon sponge. And then in the middle, it's packed with a ton of fresh strawberries and toasted almonds on the side. To the naked eye, it doesn't look that bad, but I know that the amount of strawberries inside is going to be a bit of a tough one because they're quite sort of big and bulky. Let's have a look. This is a mess. This is effectively like strawberries and cream with two pieces of pound cake over it. It's just too simple for me. Yeah, I think this cake is clunky. And what's in front of me is a cake that has a slightly dry pound cake to it. And the strawberries, you're asking to marinate them when you have them that big and an abbreviated time limit. You're not going to get that maceration that you want for those strawberries. But I think the lemon is a saving grace here. Thank you. It is overloaded with cream. A beautiful strawberry jam would have been a nice alternative. Yeah. But it's, it's a tough one, this one, Arthur. It's not good. Thank you. Wow. All right, so the cake from the baby boomers that disappointed us. Please come forward. Geeks. My cake maybe it could have been a little better in certain areas, but Anna's didn't look too good. At least mine is not leaning. And so maybe I might squeeze on by. I made a vanilla cake with blueberries and cream cheese frosting. Yeah, listen, I know it's a cake competition, but all jokes apart, uh, a man of your age should not be putting your name on your cake. And then it's not even spelled correctly, so it's a cake to get inspired by childhood memories, not a cake made by a five-year-old. I got more nervous when I heard the flour going inside that frosting. I'd never heard that in my life. Why would you put flour? Just to thicken it up a little bit. I can't taste it. I, I tasted the... Oh, you're a judge now? Geeks, help me out. Help me out. I, I, yeah, no, I, but I, I'm, I'm just, I'm concerned. That's crazy. What were you thinking? Geeks, you don't put raw flour in a frosting. Period. Raw flour is raw. Like, people are not meant to eat raw flour. Uh, it needs to be cooked. Uh, Hopefully it'll taste good. Geeks, tell me the layers. It's a layer of blueberries with some uh, whipped cream in the middle. Listen, the sponge is light. Let's get that absolutely clear. But unfortunately, that's where it ends. I'm really struggling with that flour in the frosting. It's inedible. It's youthful. But it's tough to find a beacon of light here. Geeks, this tastes like blueberry pancakes to me. Okay. Doesn't taste like cake. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anna, Arthur, Geeks, we need a very serious moment. Please excuse us. Okay. Boy, I'm in shock. Major failures out there. <laughs> The only one of the three cakes you could eat is office. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Anna's was inedible. Inedible. Apart from the construction of the cake, I'm talking about how imbalanced it was with the amount of frosting. Yeah. The problem with Geeks is that it was just the raw flour in the frosting was a, a massive mistake. Maybe Terrible. the most egregious mistake of the evening. But I mean, based on the mistake of both those cakes, how? Do you choose? Here's the deal. We can't set the precedent of having two kicks that bad. We can't accept that. Mm. This is like the longest they've talked ever. Okay, I'm stressed. This is really hard. Man. Tough, 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 tough. Anna, Arthur, Geese, we've talked at length and we've come to a very difficult conclusion. Leaving tonight is... Geeks. And Anna. Oh. 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 It's simply not fair just to send one of you home tonight. Both of your cakes had egregious mistakes. Arthur, please say goodbye and head back to your station. I know you came into this competition like a storm. I 
incredibly exciting, young, dynamic Ukrainian chef that has food in her blood. And watching you rise over those last couple of challenges has been so exciting to see. But tonight you had that advantage by trying to take out Gen Z and unfortunately it backfired. You ended up taking out yourself. Geese, a muscle-bound baby boomer, and you'll go down in history in this competition as someone that's fun, loving, and constantly energized. Tonight, unfortunately, that flower in your frosting was something that we've never witnessed before. We're gonna miss you both. Come and say goodbye, Geese. Come on, man. Anna, come and say goodbye. What do you want? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. I really come appreciate it. It's not the end, okay? The geeks that came into the Master Chef kitchen was kind of naive, I guess. So I felt like I grew from this. It's like life. Got to experience it, whether it's good or bad. And then you just take from what you learn and move on. I'm proud of myself of what I was able to do in the Master Chef kitchen, but I wanted to take it to the next level. I do think that I have a calling with food, and this cake does not define me as a cook. Two phenomenal chefs. Bye, Anna. Bye, Bye guys. Geeks. Next time on MasterChef Generations, we're taking a trip down memory lane. Under that box are iconic ingredients from your childhood. Cheese whiz! Meat. I don't know what any of that is. Becca! Hi, Chef. You'll choose which generation has to cook with each box of ingredients. Ooh. Oh, my God. Let's go, let's go. He could be in trouble tonight. Just a little bit. I'm not scared. We'll see. Becca threw you under the bus. Yeah. I love it. What kind of a sick world do you live in? Unfortunately, we can't eat that. Oh, my gosh. Oh, dear. You've absolutely it.